So they're all leaving the restaurant that night. Nana's like, hey, do you want me to watch the kids tonight so y'all can do like outfit stuff or something? And Katie's like, yeah, I guess. I it's guess. So, she, oh, yes. I would love to have sex with Tucker tonight. Yep. Sounds ooh, <laughs> yammers. I can't wait to. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, one second. I just. Uh, mm, yeah. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema, because if we don't keep moving, we'll sink. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. Atlas Shrugged Rom-Com, I've been saying for years. <laughs> yeah. I'm on Atlas Shrugged Rom-Com. <laughs> and finally, we delivered. Got it. And sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm amazing, Noah. And if I wasn't, I would just squeeze my butt cheeks and then I would be. <laughs> that <laughs> is how it works. That's how it works. <laughs> so tell uh, us I just blocked you. I just squeezed. Oh, I squeezed no. Oh, damn it. Damn it. He unsqueezed. <clears throat> so t- <laughs> tell us, he- <laughs> what butt cheek squeezing movie will we be breaking down today? I shat we, myself. I just we, want the audience to know that for the rest of the podcast. It was podcast. bound to happen, yeah. Yeah. Listen, that was my vision board, so. <laughs> it. Damn it. We watched. Knew I should have gone with bigger than 8 by 11. <laughs> <laughs> we watched The Secret Dare to Dream. The Secret 2, sort of, as best they could to continue the franchise. Kind of. It's the love story of a genius inventor hijacking the affection of a struggling single mom using universe magic. That's really the plot. Mm-hmm. And to be clear, by universe magic, I mean money. By yep. using yes. money to yep. buy mm-hmm. things. Money and free time. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you're so opposed to understanding your privilege that you'll literally resort to telling yourself that the universe loves you more than starving children in Africa, (laughs) you will love this movie. Yep. Yeah. So to be clear, we're not watching the secret, Secret. which I discovered after seven minutes of watching the secret and realizing it just wasn't matching up with (laughs) Eli's notes. We're watching an uninspired rom-com that has been ever so slightly peppered with references to the secret in some kind of aborted attempt to create a cinematic The Secret verse. Which we stand on this podcast. Look, trying to create a verse in any art form, we appreciate here at Puzzle. <laughs> it's, very, it's harder than it looks. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Best worst slap. Oh my God. Best worst slapping. <laughs> There's, okay. The, the main character played by Katie Holmes does a slap of one of the other main characters at one point because it seems mm-hmm. like he betrayed her somehow. And it's the saddest slap. It was like, so very clearly, like, I almost literally missed we should do another take and you watch her think that and then no. it was you. The guy who is supposed to get slapped is like, did you want you a wanna... mulligan or are we, <laughs> are we rolling? If there had been a butterfly sitting on his cheek, I don't know that it would have been disturbed enough to flutter away by the light little slaplet <laughs> she gave. It was incredible. <laughs> All right, so I was <laughs> I was gonna go. Well, I was I was gonna go with best worst slap, but Heath beat me to it. I was gonna go as my second place with best worst envelope sealant. <laughs> now, so okay, so here's here's what happened. So on the book, the secret, right? The the cover has the title on like a wax seal of old parchment or whatever, and that's sort of the symbol of the movie. So there's an envelope that plays a prominent role in this movie, but it's sealed with a wax seal. Like it's from the fucking Teutonic Order or some shit for just no reason. No reason. It's legal documents. Yes. Also, bad reason. Like, you would not want to wax seal the documents we'll eventually learn are inside that envelope. Exactly. Right. I love it. No, the envelope might as well be the book, The Secret, just going (laughs) through the whole movie. I'm sorry. I literally cannot wait to talk about this fucking envelope and how devil may care our protagonist is with it. (laughs) It's, It's unbelievable. Yep. And it's what we get instead of a plot for the first two acts. Just this oh, envelope. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to go with best worst ingratitude. So here's what this movie is going for. 
Early on, we're supposed to see that these people are negative thinkers. The lady and her kids, they're negative thinkers. They're not manifesting positivity. But what that actually plays out as is they are the least grateful pieces of shit yes. yeah. to all the nice people <laughs> in their life. There's a, I'm going to go ahead and say it, sequence of 20 minutes they spend with their grandma where all that grandma does is like, do you kids want something nice? And they're like, Fuck you, you <laughs> <They are>. bitch. <laughs> it's so awful. All right, well, I'll tell you what. We've got two acts and nothing and a third play and makeup to look forward to. So we're going to take a quick break to prepare. And when we come back, we'll dive into all the magical coincidences that are the secret. Dare to dream. Lulu, Lou, doing Heath stuff. Heath stuff is my favorite stuff. Lulu, Lou. Well, hello there, Heath. Oh, hey, inside out little girl. I haven't seen you on the show for a while. What are you doing here? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm here to tell you that big cell phone company are a bunch of that are. Whoa, where did that come from? Well, I picked up a sponsorship. Got to get that money. You know what I mean? Glunk, Jason, Tor, Keith. Oh, hey, former first lady Melania Trump. What's up? Cascarth, come here to tell her big cell phone company are a bunch of grill majors. Okay, look, ladies, I understand that big cell phone companies spend a ton of time attacking each other for my business, but I'm not going to shop at either of those companies because I have Mint Mobile. What's Mint Mobile? Well, if saving more and spending less is one of your top goals for 2023, why are you still paying insane amounts of money every month for your phone bill? Switching to Mint Mobile is the easiest way to save this year. As the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, Mint Mobile Let's you order from home and save a ton with phone plans starting at just $15 a month. Chef Queen, dollars a month? You are stealing my children. What? Nope. Uh, did you say I'm stealing your children? I feel stealing like that's my children. No, I am not stealing your children. By going online only and eliminating the traditional costs of retail, Mint Mobile passes significant savings on to you. All plans come with unlimited talk and text, plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Plus, you can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and switch easily in minutes with eSIM. All right, Heath, I'm sold. Where do I sign up? To get your new wireless plan for just $15 a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash gam. That's mintmobile.com slash g-a-m. Cut your wireless bill to $15 a month at mintmobile.com slash gam. All right, thanks, Heath. Sorry, just want to clarify, is... You are stealing my children just like an expression that you use, Melania? Yeah, you know, like, like a bog witch. Nope, I, I, I don't know. I also don't know. Oh, you know. Bog witch? Bog witch. A bog witch, obviously. Yeah, bog witch. Coming in this t tall Tyler here. I'm like, I, it's tough. <laughs> Get out of the sketch, tall Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, welcome to the first writer's meeting of The Secret Dare to Dream. Now, before we get started, uh, let's just take a second to acknowledge the miracle that by total chance, we all happen to be in this meeting right now. Breathtaking. Yes, thank you. I mean, we scheduled the meeting. Sorry, I'm sorry, Carl, who's this that's speaking now? Oh, uh, yeah, this is Craig. He's the... Um actual writer for like the movie parts of the movie oh right yes oh hello craig Hi. all right so obviously we want this to be a romance hallmark yes exactly exactly all those beats but we want the message to be you know just what miracles are possible would you believe oh miracles like um religious type stuff oh not no uh, not, not necessarily i mean that's what a miracle is that's that's not how we use the word miracle. You don't use the definition of the word? No, we don't. I, sorry, sorry. I am manifesting understanding uh, and amazing collaboration. Me too. Uh, Me too. I'm also right, doing that. Yeah. Okay. So by miracles, you mean like when good coincidences happen? No, not always coincidences, Craig. Sometimes you... Bring things into your life, like when you order a, a beautiful shirt. And then it just comes in the mail. Okay, so good coincidences and sometimes when you buy things, you have the things that you buy. 
Exactly. Yes, that's it. Got it. Yeah, great. Okay. Um, I- I'll have a draft by Monday. So. Oh, wow. Really? No moral objections? Oh, no, no, no. I'm a writer for Gravitas Ventures. <laughs> I'm just relieved you're not Christian. So, no problem. Hooray! I'm manifesting a car right now. Do you mean buying? Are you buying a car with money? Yes. Okay. And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to start off with this hilarious series of production qualities in ever-descending quality and grandiosity until the last one is just (laughs) stuck to the fridge with a magnet. God. Lionsgate, and then at the end, it's like, with secret truck sales and or also movies one time, maybe. (laughs) Okay, so when we're about to start one of these, I'll often be like, all right, let me do a quick check on IMDb, just get a little background before I start. And I look at the poster, just the poster, and it's Katie Holmes very clearly being all angsty on a dock. And I was like, great. So Dawson's Creek, but everybody's 40. This is going to be awesome. <laughs> yep. Love that. <laughs> yep. And then I also see that there's a main character named Bray. Yeah. B-R-A-Y. And I was like, I quit the show. I'm quitting now. <laughs> the other male lead is Tucker. It's so bad. Tucker. <laughs> but Bray's just a noise horses make. Like Wolfstrom Alpha was like, do you mean the noise horses make? And I was like, no, the name. And uh, Wolfstrom Alpha was like, no, man. <laughs> So. If throughout the movie he was just like, eh, oh, like then maybe there, there'd be, yeah, you know. right, right. Oh, he's a horse in disguise the whole time. She opens up the envelope at the end. It's just one piece of paper that says, I'm a horse. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, but we're opening it up on a hurricane heading towards Louisiana, right? Or maybe not. Maybe it's heading towards Louisiana. Maybe it's going to go elsewhere. Who knows? And then we settle in on a couple of fishermen and I guess, Katie Holmes wants to buy this guy's crabs. It's not as sexy as I'm making it sound. No. Yeah. And this movie never decides how this fish market slash restaurant is doing. Like it, one of the threads and look, this movie loses a lot of fucking threads, but the very first thread they're going to lose is like, she's a hard working fish marketer. No, she's not. Never mind. That's nope. She's never going to show up for work at any point. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But don't worry, her sassy co-workers who are her dear, dear friends will speak exactly one line each later in the film. <laughs> right, yeah, they're all coming back. Yeah, but yeah, we, we see her doing her hard work. She has to go out to the docks that are, like, apparently this this seafood restaurant is right up against the docks. They just go out and buy fish directly from the boats. And she's doing that. She does the stupid, like, scribbling something onto a paper way too fast to actually have written anything bit and hands the dude an invoice. It's so fucking dumb. Uh, yeah, I wanted him to be like, you just scribbled. What What do you hand? This is... This, obviously, there's no words. What do I do with this? In that, so. I'm just... So this is Joey Potter for me. I'm a, I'm a child okay. of the Dawson's Creek generation. This is Joey Potter. So I'm just putting Dawson's Creek stuff into everything she says at this point. Fair. So she's just like scribbling and I'm just like, I don't want to wait. <laughs> no, I can't. I can't hear you. So, but she. We learn that she's late for her dentist appointment, and then she goes upstairs where the guy who owns the restaurant, who is also her boyfriend, who is also Vern from Stand by Me. Now we're in my generation here. Okay, he is Jerry O'Connell. Jerry O'Connell. He's there, being like, "Hi, I'm the boring boyfriend at the beginning of the movie," and she's like, "You sure <laughs> are, Vern from Stand by Me." She's like, oh, I got these crabs cheap. And he goes, that's my girl. And I wrote in my notes, you know, I've never said that's my girl to affirm Anna. I'm going to try it out. Please sing at my funeral. (laughs) (laughs) So, and we should probably point out early on, right, that like from the very beginning of this movie, we have to reinforce the secrets bullshit, right? Which is the idea that like positive thinking brings positive shit to you or whatever. So we have to see constantly, we have to see her negative thinking. So stupid. Right. I was going to say, and and the opposite, which in, in the beginning of this movie is that negative thinking brings hurricanes to you. Right. Like hurricanes. Okay. Everybody should be doing a vision board with some Sharpie and making that storm angle away from wherever they are. <laughs> New Orleans. If you believe this and anything about you is on your vision board, you're a pleasure monster. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, keep in mind, like, what a dangerous thing it is to tell people now. The worst thing you can do if there's a hurricane maybe coming is prepare because then you're thinking about it coming. Yeah. Anyway, 
So now it's time to meet our magical love interest. We check in on a, a hotel in the French Quarter. Handsome makes handsome walks in, right? <laughs> He's like, I have a reservation for a, a for a hotel room here reservations if you know what i mean and he's so <laughs> like he's supposed to be the good guy and it remains that way through the movie all of my notes are like this is not a, this guy's weird and creepy and evil for sure well, yeah that's what's what's amazing is this sort of like i can think it into existence douchebaggery comes off as serial killer level confidence he seems right? like a serial killer yes the secret wants us to be like isn't this the like the wide-eyed yoga teachers who we've assigned to sell you this book and this dvd but we're just like i don't know man i think he's got jars of hands in his basement <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> his eye contact is too long yeah, right. He's like, you know, do you have a room with a view? And Sloan, the hotel clerk, she's going to be a major character. Sloan says, no, you know, those are all full. And he's like, well, let me positive think for a second. And then a maid comes out and says, hey, a room with a view just opened up unexpectedly. Ridiculous. Yeah. Room one, by the way, is the claim. Yes. Room one is never the best room. You're a liar. That vision board, <laughs> literally vision board. It was wrong about views just now. That's <laughs> never the best room. One of the girl at the desk to be like, hey, man, did you use your magic powers just now to get a room instead of like cure a child cancer? Uh, no, I was doing. I'm, <laughs> I'm always thinking about children with cancer. Only the so, cancerous ones. So meanwhile, you validate this parking. <laughs> Now, now, meanwhile, we, we check in on Katie Holmes. She's at the dentist. She needs a root canal. And you're probably thinking, well, I guess they've spent so much time on this dentist shit now. That's probably going to affect the remainder of the movie in some fucking way, no, right? No, it will not. All it's going to do is remind us how dumb the premise of the fucking secret is. Dentistry disproves that entire book and this entire movie. <laughs> right, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, also... There aren't a lot of times when the members of this podcast can say, like, check your privilege to a movie, but you just have one root canal and it's only going to cost you $2,300. <laughs> this <Yeah>. podcast, <laughs> we can top it. I think we I think, can. I think we can. I think we can. So, yeah, and, and so she, we see she's in her car. She's driving on the, the, the news is like the latest forecast suggests that the hurricane is going to miss us. And of course, she negative thinks at it. She goes, sure. Right. Again, so like I, the, this movie's <laughs> argument is all the people in Katrina who died, it was their fault that that hurricane hit. It was their negative thinking, wondering, oh, God, what am Nancy's. I going to do? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you should have vision boarded higher than sea level by a lot instead of a negative number. You should have vision boarded a positive number. Your fault. I mean, let, let's be fair. This is a movie based on a movie based on a book that says Holocaust victims didn't use positive thinking to their advantage. So, yeah, we're not. That's true. Yes, right. We're not far from the source material. No. All right. So now we're going to check in on Bray. That was the that's the magical hotel guy. He's got my best worst. He's got a manila envelope from fucking Staples with an old timey medieval wax seal on the goddamn thing. With a wax seal. Is he inviting Katie Holmes to a royal ball in the 17th <laughs> century? What the fuck is happening? Okay. Can we spoil the contents of this envelope? Because I think sure, it's yeah, important yeah. to understand how shitty the rest of this movie is. Inside that envelope, he has proof that he gave her dead husband credit for the invention that they made together, along with a check for $104,000. Yes. My friends, if you have a check for $104,000 for someone... They do not care what you do at their house for how long or whence. You stay until they arrive and then you deliver the check. Just wire it. Already have wired the money. <laughs> right. Well, you open with, I have a check for $106,000 for you. That's the opening <laughs> words out of your yep. goddamn mouth. But yeah. We'll spend the entire movie going like, I wonder what's in the envelope. And when it reveals that, the entire thing falls apart because you're like, well, why wouldn't you have just given that to her, you torturous fuck? <laughs> because everybody talks past each other for two hours like a sitcom until they can like <laughs> mm -hmm. reveal this. It's so dumb. That's the entire premise. Everything nice that he does for the rest of the movie is fucking insane in context that he has a check for her for $104,000. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. 
We'll, we're gonna we're gonna spend a lot of we'll time there it. as Sorry. we go. go yeah, ahead. but so he shows up with the with the envelope. Nobody answers the door. He goes around the back, and her son is sitting out on the dock. Right, he's fishing with this uh, casting line that his inventor dad made before he died. So we establish all that. Dad was an inventor. Dad died. This guy's got an envelope for mom. Is there a lot of new fishing line technology happening <laughs> right now in the present? Are we not enough? Not Are enough. Reinventing that stuff. Not enough cannon based fishing line technology. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so the kids, he says, yeah, I have this envelope for your mom. And he's like, oh, you can give it to me and I'll, I'll give it to her. And he's like, mm, this one comes with an explanation. And it's like, all right, but now you're withholding a check for $106,000 from this woman. That's not, that's bad. Okay, I'll stay here. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Nope. I'll leave and I'll come back sometime later on in the movie now. And the kid, and this is important, the kid says, okay, but don't tell her we talked. I'm not supposed to talk to strangers. Now we've established why he will remain silent about this for the next five fucking days of movie, lest he ruin the surprise. I really wanted Bray to be like, hey, kid, don't don't volunteer yourself to be so molestable. That's like a weird lay. You're like, volunteer. it's weird. Don't do that. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> so, OK, so we cut back to Katie Holmes driving through town thinking negatively. <laughs> so negative thinking saltwater taffy eater. Yeah. The worst. She, she's looking at everybody boarding up their windows and just she's going, I bet the storm is going to hit us really bad and everything's going to be really awful for all of us. And then she gets a call from her dead husband's mom. This is Bobby. Okay. I almost went with best worst cell phone on camera. I don't know why, but one out of every like 10, 20, maybe even 30 movies we watch has never seen how cell phones and movies work. So they feel the need to use this weird iMovie insert. Like, you know, a phone where there is a screen <laughs> and, a, and buttons. Right. There, it, it will take up the top right quadrant of the screen this phone you know how you have like a menu for your phone in a like in a video game like that like yeah. the terminator would see it it's like that <laughs> so we also like we subtly imply here that katie holmes doesn't believe in climate change in case you were in danger of liking this character mm, well you know well then there wouldn't be climate change Right? Well, oh, you're right. You're right. Oh, we're manifesting the climate change right now. I, it's my Ooh, fault. Yeah, my yeah. Bad. So, so she picks her kids up. She gets off the phone. She picks her kids up from the school. They get in the car, think negatively all over the place. Right? Idiots. The older daughter, this is Missy. She's mad because a more popular girl is having her birthday party the same day that Missy's having her party. And the younger daughter, Bessie, is mad because she lied and told all the kids in school that she had a pony and they called her out on it. Or was she manifesting a pony? <laughs> she was. It's so dumb. No, well, she was negative. So she was manifesting an anti-pony. There's like <laughs> negative one ponies in her life now. Made of antimatter is a pony. I'm really, tr I'm using 100% of my brain right now to think of what animal is the opposite of a pony. <laughs> oh, interesting. It's a duck, by the way. It's a duck. It's a duck. I was going butterfly, but that's because you said butterfly. Yeah, no, earlier. it's a duck. Because the whole like one duck sized, <laughs> one horse sized duck or a hundred duck sized horses. Or, anyway, no, yes. it's good. It's yep, good. Yep, yep, right. I nailed it. So anyway, so mom and Missy are. <laughs> I feel like, you know, no, I'm not just going to let you move on. I feel like you had a list already. <laughs> you, and I believe that you would do Listen. this. You probably do have a duck somewhere like opposite animals. And, and then you're going to come downstairs to listen to later and be like, oh, remember when you told me spending 40 days? 40 nights on my list of us yeah. and animals would never come into the podcast. Well, no, I went to Switzerland and smashed a duck and a pony together <laughs> in an atom accelerator. Like, <laughs> I feel like a trap was laid, and I just want to throw that out there right now. <laughs> but he's, I think we can all agree it's not butterfly. Is no, that it's definitely it's, it's it's dog. It's I mean, it's that's obviously, absurd. Yeah, you sound ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> So mom and Missy are negative thinking at each other so hard that mom uh, takes her eyes off the road and hits the car in front of her, right? She has a fender bender and who should be in the car in front of her but fucking Bray. Yeah. The universe just manifested it right there, guys. You believe that shit? Yeah. 
Because I think if you were manifesting wanting to meet up with someone who you hadn't seen, the best way you'd want to do it is for them to smash their vehicle into yours. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, at least she doesn't keep driving her minivan like through his truck at five mm -hmm. miles an mm -hmm. hour, like Eli trying to back out of a driveway hey. through a tree at five miles an hour hey. for a so. good 40 feet. <laughs> so he gets out of the car and he's like, oh, it looks like your fender took the brunt of it. I can handsomely fix this for you if you want. And she says, you can what kind of fix it? He's just regular fix it. I could regular fix it. Ugh. And she's so charmed by him. He's not likable. Am I crazy? No. Does he ever become likable until like no. so far into the end, but still not even? Well, but the, the, the fucked up thing is, is that he, they, they cast this opposite, right? He's the douchey boyfriend she has at the beginning. Yes. Right. That makes sense. That's Thank the part you. that this actor plays in every other rom-com that he's in. Yes. Also, again, I cannot emphasize this enough. He knows who she is. She introduces herself and he goes, oh, I can fix that for you. What he should say is, hey, don't worry about your fucking deductible yeah. because I have a check for a hundred and four thousand dollars in it for you. Yes. Right. But instead, he's like, no, you know what? I'll, I'll follow you back and I'll fix your uh, fender with some spray foam and some duct tape. Huh? You like that? Some duct tape on your car? And he's Don't, like, there's nothing wrong with that. I feel like we're being that. weird there's about that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, who doesn't know the opposite of a horse now, Ethan Wright? <laughs> so, duck, duck tape is closer than butterfly. So this <laughs> Oppo horse, tape horse tape is the opposite. <laughs> yes! <Yeah. laughs> So, all right. So, yeah, so he follows her to her house, realizes that she was the person he was trying to find in the first place. And then he fucking stepdads it up with her son, right? They pretend like they haven't met yet. And he's like, hey, help me fix the fender. And he's like, a father figure who will help me fix a fender. Why, great. Right? Yeah. Also, like, the son is immediately like, I want this delightful man to replace my dead dad. He smiled at me. He has duct tape. I love him. Yes. And so gross. That's dumb. People need to ask more questions about this guy who we know is hiding a huge thing. Yep. Already. We know that. That's what we know about this character. Yeah. Also, everybody forgot to put dad not dying on the vision board. I just want to like flag yeah, that. No, that's a big yeah. one. If yeah, you're doing vision boards, start with stuff like that. Maybe you yeah. know, get rid of cancer. Right, right. Hit the basics. Yeah. Well, so first thing you want is nobody can cancel out my vision board with their vision board times infinity. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You got to wish for more wishes first. So, yeah, and then as he's getting ready to, he's, he's taking his jacket off, getting ready to do some manual labor or whatever, he looks at the envelope pensively as if to say, wow, this sure is a point of suspense and curiosity for the audience. Mm, should I give her $104,000? No, no, now's not the time. I'll wait. You, the in, interest is piling up now. You owe more money at the end of this when you, when <laughs> uh, yeah, you, you need to get her this check right away. Yeah, podcast listener, if you have a check for $104,000 for me, feel free to kick in my window right now as I'm saying this sentence. <laughs> exactly. Anytime you want. Can't go too early. There's no too early on this. Zell, use Zell, use PayPal. Just have it to me already. Anything. Yep. Cash app. So so they, we, we cut back inside. Uh, Missy, the older daughter, she's just gone her way through the house like Alma. <laughs> They're all complaining about mom not being rich enough to buy him good food. Yeah, well, bring home better food. You manage a restaurant and they have like, just like, yeah, that's, that's, well, no, that's was fair. Weird, you would at least have, I, I wasn't even a manager. I got to bring home food all the time. Better than whatever I would have had. You think she'd have some soft shell crab. She got a good deal. on. Yeah. Also, they shit on rice and beans. And I just want to say rice and beans, perfectly acceptable meal. Asshole. How dare you? Some full protein. All the, all the amino acids right there. Thank you. Yeah. And, and then we, we, we check back in on uh, Bray and, and Greg. That's the son working on the car and the son it's like, yeah, you got to admit the uh, premise of this movie so far is super duper hokey. She hit you like, give me a fucking break. Right. And he's like, oh, no, no, it's not hokey. It's insane. I'm magic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. It's even worse. So the, the rain starts picking up. They go inside to wash their hands now that they're done or whatever. And there's this great little exchange where Katie Holmes is like, so what's your backstory, Bray? And he goes, it's complicated. She's like, oh, in that case, I don't care. I really, I was just, I, I have no you to say the name of your occupation. And then I wanted you to shut up. 
Just be alone with my children as much as you like. That's all I want yep, you to do. that's know. all I ask of you. And then, so the rain really picks up. The house starts to leak. Everybody runs and gets a bunch of pots to put under the leaks in the fucking house. And you know what Bray does is not say, hey, incidentally, I have a check for 106000 <laughs> One hundred and four. Is it six? It's 106 We've been going back and forth. $106,000. I was taking his percentage. $106,000. <laughs> thousand dollars for you right yeah exactly she even says do you know how expensive it is to re-roof a house and he's like it's uh, under 106 grand under 106 thousand dollars <laughs> but i'd hate to fuck up your pot fund so yeah no yeah right right and then the little girl's like i'm scared of storms and bray is like i will comfort you by something other than explaining to your mom that she's now got a hundred and six thousand fucking dollars yeah what he says is sure wind is scary but your brain is stronger and i wanted so badly for her to be like i have telekinesis no <laughs> no i just had hippie bullshit to say he explains <laughs> the whole secret thing with uh like the fucking magnets how the fuck do they work method mm -hmm. right and and but but basically yeah he lays down the, the the basis of that whole stupid fucking book which is if you think about positive or if you think about things you draw them to you right yeah and they're like all right well we're all gonna think about pizza dumbass stuffed crust pizza yeah S stuffed crust is fucking stupid <laughs> gross what there's already cheese okay so on yeah. the crust. We had opposite experience because I heard that and I was like, oh, fuck, I would kill for some stuffed crust pizza right now. Every and then single I Googled what? stuffed crust pizza and it's just pizza with cheese in it. And I don't, yeah, I don't know what I thought it was, but I was like, oh, huh, oh, Anna, did you know that stuffed crust pizza is just pizza with cheese in it? And she was like, yeah, man, what the fuck else would it be? And I was like, <laughs> I'm, I gotta get back to work. I'm busy. So What's the opposite of a horse? Did you think it was going to be like sawdust, <laughs> like, like taxidermied? I I pictured a crust. I don't know what I pictured. I pictured a crust with cheese built in. That yeah, is what it is. That's that is. the same thing. I yeah. can't explain. What is, okay. I, Describe I your face my, thought right now. <laughs> I can't. I can't do it. Okay. So, yeah. So, they're all like kind of fucking with him going like, oh, if I could draw things to me with just thinking about shit, I'll think about pizza. And then, and then there's a knock on the door and it's a fucking pizza that magically arrived. Okay. Turns out that that Tucker, the boyfriend, burned from Stand By Me, thought, well, she probably needs some pizza for tonight and had a yeah. pizza sent over. Because he's the best, and the movie will spend the entire movie shitting on Tucker. He's, this is just where he starts, yep. being a really nice guy, sending pizza. Exactly when you should do that. Yeah. Also, the pizza that allegedly magically just showed up, there's nowhere near enough pizza for these people. <laughs> it's too little. Pie. You, If you have pizza magic, you feed the whole family. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, right, because then the kids insist that she lets uh, Bray stick around and have some of the pizza. And I'm like, there's a fucking 13-year-old boy there. Like, he could down those two pizzas just himself. So easily. Are you fucking kidding me? Add Bray? They should invite the $106,000 check to have some pizza. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so, yeah, but so Bray stays for pizza. And I just, I have to, the pizza looks so fucking bad. It looks so just gross and gas station-y. <laughs> Oh. I also, I didn't like that Greg is the son, right? Mm -hmm. He's like, he's not asking questions about this ridiculous guy. He's actually on board with the guy too. And he's trying to like hook up his mom with this guy, Bray, even though he knows Tucker who sent the pizza and has been like really cool for years. But he's like, mom, like you're just going to let him leave and not have the magical pizza. You like, you smashed his truck. I mean... You should probably at least ask him how you're going to pay for all that pizza, right? right? Like, <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> Something? Nothing? No? Yeah. And the, I love there's, while well, they're eating the pizza, the older daughter is like, are you like a Buddhist or something? And he's like, no, I'm just, uh, you know, very aloof and cool. No, I'm not a Buddhist. I'm actually significantly more annoying than the worst <laughs> version of that. <laughs> Right, because let's be clear. What that little girl means is, hey, man, you sound like an idiot. Yes. And the only people I know who sound like that are white Buddhists. Are you a white <laughs> Buddhist? <laughs> yeah. And he's like, no, but you definitely can conjure magical stuff like white Buddhists say, just like in <laughs> Buddhism. You know, there's conjuring of magical stuff. Yes, the yeah. conjuring of magical stuff. Yeah. So, and, and then, so he goes to leave. He's about to tell her. He's like, you know, I have a check for a hundred and foot. 
And then there's an interruption, as there so often is in this stupid fucking movie, right? I wrote my notes. It's like he starts to explain it to her, but a spider interrupts his monologue. It's not as exciting as I'm making that sound. <laughs> no. The little girl just screams, oh, mom, a spider. And she has to run. And he's like, I guess there's no way for me then to explain to you that I am holding in my hand a check for $106,000 for you. I shall drive away into the storm. Let's see. What should I do with this check for $106,000? I should probably put it in the most fragile outdoor structure I see in the next 30 <laughs> In a seconds. fucking hurricane. Yeah, he drives by the mailbox. He knows it's a hurricane and he puts it in a mail my mailbox in New Jersey in non-hurricanes. If it fucking spits from the sky, instantly feeds it into all my mail and turns it into a wet pile of confetti. <laughs> so... Yeah. And also, by the way, you can't just go sticking shit in people's mailbox if you're not the fucking mailman. That's against the goddamn law. Federal laws. That's right. Federal crime. Damn straight it is. Honestly, I was just hoping he was a process server who was just sandbagging <laughs> it at this point. <laughs> oh, it was like a really long time. <laughs> that would have made sense. That yeah. would have made sense. Right, right. Okay. Now, now that I've already had the pizza. Yeah. All right. So late that night, mom's up watching the Weather Channel, texting back and forth with Vern. Right. And again, weird insert on whatever iMovie they were using. The texts like appear across her face and do little fucking word art dances across the screen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So but now and, and importantly, Vern is like, hey, you know, if you wanted to thank me for sending you free pizza, now would be the time. She's like, right. Right. Thank you. And then he calls her and she ignores the call because she doesn't want to talk to that motherfucker. She's not that grateful for the pizzas, Vern. Relax. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So that night she's in bed and she hears a loud crash in the middle of the storm, gets up to check it out. And a tree has fallen through her roof into her kitchen. <laughs> yeah. I wanted them to just cut to somebody in Tampa with a vision board being like, please hit New Orleans. Nice. That worked really well. <laughs> All right. Cut over to Tom Cruise's house. Oh, okay. Oh, no. We see what's happening here. <laughs> <laughs> and then she escorts her children into the tub. Now, look, I don't want to cast aspersions, but uh, I do. Is that what you do? When there's structural damage to your house, do you yeah. get in the tub? No, you get in a tub that faces up towards the ceiling that could break. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, that'll protect you from that or a nuclear blast. You can do it with a fridge, too. An open I guess fridge. you couldn't fit all the kids in the fridge. <laughs> if you duck yeah. and cover, you should be just fine. <laughs> <laughs> and they go to sleep. Yep. Like, she's just like, well, there's no need to call emergency services. The no, no need nope, to go to a hotel. No need to go to a... We'll check all that in the morning. Re emergency shelter or anything like that. We're just going to chill. No. I love that the little kid, Bessie, is like, it's a, it's not clear how you think the bathtub is going to help right now. Mom. Like, I'm getting in, but like, you're dumb. <laughs> Geometrically. <laughs> Sleep in the tub. <laughs> Do you have geometrical insanity? All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Believe it or not, that limb that just fell through her roof is essentially the plot of the fucking movie. So we're going to pause long enough for that to sink in and we'll come back with even more of The Secret. Dare to Dream. Oh, man, that's a lot. Hey, Heath, what's the matter? Yeah, so I really want to get these new ski boots, but they're so expensive. Yeah, that stinks, man. I'm sorry. Mm. Did somebody say ski boots? What? Who? Who are you? I'm the free trial fairy. Simply sign up to get ski boots and don't pay a dime. Ooh, that does sound good. Heath, don't you know those free trials are a scam to hook you into a forgotten subscription? Hey, man, be cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. But what the free trial fairy doesn't know is that I have rocket money. Ooh, is that like cartoon exploding money? It's better. The app shows all your subscriptions in one place and cancels what you don't want for you. Rocket Money can even find subscriptions you didn't know you were paying for. You may even find you've been double charged for a subscription. To cancel a subscription, all you have to do is press cancel and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. What? No way! Way. Cancel unnecessary subscriptions with Rocket Money today. Go to rocketmoney.com slash awful movies. Seriously, it could save you hundreds of dollars a year. That's rocketmoney.com slash awful movies. Curse you, Rocket Money! Man, I'm, I'm surprised you're so calm about another fairy creature on our shows. Hey, at least this one doesn't hate me, right? So, No, oh, I hate you, all right. Okay. <laughs> Hi, 
I'm Tony D. From Tony D's house of humans you can't believe exist. You know our manic pixie dream girls. You couldn't get enough of our NFT bros, which is why we're pleased to present Clueless Positivity Bro. That's right. Clueless Positivity Bro has done so little self-reflection of his own privilege in the world that he literally thinks he's magic. So you can have interactions like this. Man, I love the beach. Why don't people just like live on the beach? Doesn't your dad own the marina? He does. I, I don't see how that's relevant. And this. Guys, guys, you know, it'd be crazy if we just like went to Europe. You want to just go to Europe like right now? I have, I have fucking work on Monday, man. Ah, you're no fun. Clueless positivity, bro. His family owns slaves. <laughs> <laughs> we do. We do. No. They work at the marina. Did is actually the way we were going. <laughs> And we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action the day after the storm, taking a look at the aftermath. So yeah, the storm's over. That was, we're done. That was the, the, the limb fell through the roof. That, that was its part. Yeah, right. It fell through and it didn't fall in like the very one specific way that it would have been, been a save to be inside the tub for one of the people and not the other ones. Yeah, right. It fell through the kitchen and landed on the kitchen island. Yes. I just want to flag here that Eli Bosnick hates kitchen islands, which is weird. I hate kitchen islands. I do okay. hate kitchen islands. All right. And I'll have that fight any day. That's probably it. It's my line. What do you need? So you're saying he was behind this? Somehow? I'm saying yeah. Eli vision boarded, I hate kitchen islands and hurt this family. And this came true. All and right. this came Makes true. perfect and I'll sense. I'll own that. It's not a table. It's not a counter. What's it doing it's here? Get it out things. of there. It's a table. It's a counter. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> so, so mom wakes up. She's uh, she starts walking through the house to see how bad the damage is. And, and of course, it's it's bad. And then outside we see Bray. He pulls up and he sees that the mailbox in the night has been torn away by the storm. And he has this look on his face like, <laughs> yeah, I probably should have thought of that. Uh, I, I shouldn't have put that I check forgot for to vision board her house. Not getting hundred and six. That's on me. Thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> could have just given her that money. And I could have combined the, the pizza vision board with the not fucking up their house in the hurricane. Damn it. Yeah. I'm a dick about my magical powers now that I think of it. <laughs> yeah, no, I wrote in my notes. I, sh oh, I shouldn't have negatively wondered whether it was going to stay on, motherfucker. Coincidence is your fault. Works both ways. All right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> One or the other. So anyway, so he parks in her driveway, surveys the damage. She walks out and he goes, are you okay? <laughs> so, Are you doing great? Is this awesome for you? <laughs> this is exactly how you had Notice you got a new renter. Your vision board. That big tree. <laughs> yeah. So, is this Tucker? The tree? Yeah. Is the Tucker tree? So, so stupid. And he's like, so did you get the homeowner's insurance? <laughs> and she's like, yeah, I do. I have a deductible of like $5,000 though. So I don't even know why you'd ask me that. Also, insurance proves this entire movie wrong. Just yep. another thing. Sure. And, and look, so here he is. He's standing there the, like a, a limb fell on her minivan, like big ass limb, like a big old chunk of thing. She can't drive her fucking car. There's a limb through her fucking house. Her mailbox is blown away. Or her yard's in a fucking mess. And he starts giving her this power of positive thinking speech. Can you fucking imagine? This man would leave my yard with one of those down branches up his ass and the very same <laughs> branch out his mouth. Yeah. Jesus yeah. fucking Christ. Here's what he does not say to her. Oh, don't worry. I've got great news. Yesterday, when I was talking to you and your children, yes. the fact that I have a check for $106,000 <laughs> didn't come up. But now, right here, in this moment, is literally the best possible time for me to tell you that unless I am of the belief that when a check is destroyed the money attached to it is also destroyed <laughs> yeah. it's so when you what animal is the opposite of a check <laughs> so uh, <laughs> disappears squid obviously um, so when, no one has when, quick answers I, I, no yet have you been running the list before it's obvious because he of the, the ink list. Jesus Christ people uh, <laughs> so get an opposites book damn so <laughs> anyway though it's even worse because when you think about it the, the fact that he knows she has this money he's like well you know we could probably fix that roof for, for way less than the $5,000 deductible she says you think he says if you give me $500 
I will fix your roof. This is a man looking to buy crack. Yes. At this point. This is a guy. He's he's going to fix her roof with prosperity gospel. This is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, yeah, we'll just we'll just improvise a roof. And at that point, I was like, I want a roof made of pizza that he magically conjured. I want a pizza roof with duct tape and a, a duck. You know, tin foil is tougher than it looks. They use NASA uses that stuff, if you can believe that. OK, but <laughs> genuinely, what is the good faith reading of this moment? Right. We wrote this movie. What how do we defend this scene? There is no one. It's impossible. <laughs> The reason he fit, honestly, the closest I could get is like, well, the reason he fixes her roof is because she's got a lesson to learn before she's ready for all that money. Right. No, over and over again, people ask, like, why is anything in this movie happening? And the characters will say, I have no idea. It doesn't make any sense at all, does it? No, it does he it. would need to be the reconciler doing like a serial killer <laughs> right, Christianity yes. lesson thing for right. this to be reasonable for him not to just give that money right away. So mom goes back inside. The kids are dejectedly cleaning up from the from the flooding and everything. Missy is mostly just worried about her birthday party getting fucked up. Sure. Sorry. Just quick thing. Doesn't this guy have like a job and a life in Tennessee? He's a university professor. No, he, he's a teacher. You know how universities are famously flexible about their schedules? <laughs> yeah. So this guy was like, hi, Vanderbilt University. Yeah, I got to rebuild a house for a lady in New Orleans for like a minute. I'll be back when I'm done with that. Can you go to my room and put on a movie? She <laughs> thinks that she can't afford it, but she can. It's weird. It's weird. I'm yeah. doing a reconciler. It doesn't matter. I'll be back. <laughs> Just pause the university for like a week. So Missy's like, we should cancel my birthday party because the house is all fucked up. And mom's like, no, we're not doing that. And I'm like, that's that's the incorrect answer. The, like The right answer is, yeah, we're going to have to do that. No. Your birthday's going to be treat themed. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone has to burst through a different fixed structure in our house to get inside. We're going to do a house building party with <laughs> child labor that will beat the shit out of that food truck party. So that's what we're doing. One of my favorite aspects of one of my favorite moments in this entire fucking movie is this moment right here, right? Because because the kids are like, what are we going to do? And Bray says, well, we'll just pull out this lever, whatever. But he inserts himself and in the kids have not seen that he's around, right? He's climbed up onto the roof <laughs> yeah. and he inserts himself into the conversation by calling down through the hole in the roof. When they're like, what are we going to do? Yeah, he might as well repel. He might as well yeah. repel <laughs> on duct tape into the room and start talking. Also, we just see his face for a second. And I really I noticed here he looks just like Jonah Hill, but like Jonah Hill became a, a model for Eddie Bauer. And okay. wears like Ooh. a flannel with leather no, elbow it. pads for no reason. Yeah, I, I see it. I absolutely see it. We actually see those elbow pads. What the fuck? El what do you? What elbow stuff is happening in people's lives? Oh, it's that a lot. They need a shirt from Eddie Bauer that protects that spot. <laughs> oh, let me let me tell you. As a teacher, it's a lot. It's mostly elbow based. It's a lot, a lot yeah. of elbows. Really? So okay. And then Nana shows up, the mother in law that we briefly met earlier. She shows up and she gives Bray this suspicion. Honestly, to me, it looked like they they were her down to fuck guys, but like it's supposed to be, she's supposed to be very suspicious of this mysterious man that shows up and wants to fix her house for $500. Let me be clear. I think the movie is supposed to be like, oh, this woman's mother-in-law or ex-mother-in-law, whatever, whatever you fucking call it. She's a little overbearing. But all she will do is make perfectly reasonable statements throughout this movie. Yep. Yes. She drives up. She's like, are you OK? It appears there's a tree in your house. And she's like, mom, let it go. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. She's like, well, perhaps your kids should come and stay with with me at my house that doesn't have any trees in it. And she's like, don't be a bitch about it. OK. Stop. Yeah, but they don't like it there. Really? They like it here yeah. with the tree? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> There's a guy rappelling down through the hole with duct this tape. I don't know what you think any... this is. You can't live here. So, so, yeah, so she's like, all right, yeah, the kids can go stay with you as long as they're ungrateful bastards about it every minute of the time. I just, I'm going to instruct them to be real pieces of shit every <laughs> yeah. second they're in your house. Just real fucking assholes about it. Yeah. Also, I like that grandma becomes the first person to really like question the absurd situation with this guy, Bray. Because mm -hmm. 
Joey Potter goes over to Bray at this point and is like, okay, so I'm taking the kids to grandma's house just so you know, so much, you know, stuff you got to do on the roof. Thanks for doing that. And grandma's, we see her, they show her like off to the side away from that conversation and she's in her car and she, she tries to loudly roll down her window in, <laughs> in skepticalness. She, yeah, in skepticism. She's like, mm, window, window, uh, skeptical roll down. <clears throat> and of course, and there's also this great moment where like, Katie Holmes explains to Bray the power of negative thinking, right? Because he's going off on one of his stupid positive thinking things. He's like, yeah, I wish you wouldn't keep saying that shit to my kids because like I want them to have realistic expectations about life because that also matters. And he's like, nope, sure not. Not if you're privileged enough. It sure as fuck doesn't. And not if you have a check for $106,000 yeah. <laughs> that you haven't told someone about. And this is also, by the way, where we learned that her husband died five years ago. This is where Bray learns that or... So we think, right? Think, think about the, again, think about the fucking sociopathy. Because again, as we will later learn in this movie, he is perfectly aware that her husband died five years ago. She has brought this up. He has a check for $106,000. She's like, yeah, no, my husband passed away. That's why things are as tough for us as they are. We sure are desperate. And he's like, well, I better get to work on the roof. Yes. yes. Don't forget you owe me $500 for it. You agreed to pay me. And that's the agreement we made. <laughs> so, and then, oh, and then we get this, the first of two amazing tool using montages from an actor who has clearly never tooled a tool before. Oh, this is great. <laughs> At one point, okay. So this insane hero is doing his house fixing montage. They do a montage yeah. of this, mm -hmm. which is dumb to begin with, but then they like think through it some more. It gets dumber as they do stuff. <laughs> they, At one point have him waving a floor mat just outside to like yeah. undust it. Yes, and, and it, dusting a mat. That doesn't work for, you can't have music and then have a guy be like, <coughs> 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 So stupid. Now, and of course, as he's doing this, he sees a picture of the family with dead dad in it, and he flashes back to the fact that he knew dead dad, and they invented inventions together. Because remember, he was an inventor from before. This is a flashback <laughs> inside of a montage. You're not allowed to. There's no swooshing a doodly do. This is no. <laughs> first of all, <laughs> no swooshing a doodly. doodly get lost. Thank you. No, that's correct. That actually is also the rule. I didn't know the plot of the movie at this point, and I was like, oh, please let them have been gay lovers. Please oh, let them that have been, been gay good. lovers. That could have been fun. So, yeah, so so as he's doing the roof stuff, he gets a call from a attractive young woman that we're supposed to be tricked into believing is his girlfriend. She's not long term spoiler, but he gets a call from his girlfriend. Bray does. And she's like, hey, so have you done the big reveal with the wax sealed envelope? And and he's like, no. And she's like, wow, why not? And he's like, it's um still act two. I literally have I don't even have a pretend answer because the writers are so bad. <laughs> I don't know. I'm thinking of carrying around the MacGuffin for a, li a little bit more. I don't know. I'm getting $500 for this roofing gig. <laughs> what are you, the God Awful Movies podcast? I'll give her the check when I'm yeah. fucking ready. <laughs> so, okay. So then we get the family all pulling up at Nana's house and the kids are being so shitty. They're like, your neighborhood's, uh, her house, uh, Nana's house is lovely, right? And it's in a lovely little neighborhood. And they're like, your house is stupid and boring and filled with quiet old people who are just waiting to die. Where are all the children? <laughs> Where are all the children? I'm sorry, do you find random children wandering about your neighborhood to play with? <laughs> are you trapping them like mousetrap the board game? <laughs> right? Go hang out with your friends, you fucking weirdos. <laughs> so also, your other house has a hole in it. Right. Yeah, exactly. That's the alternative here. So we see them go into the end uh, Nana's house and then Tucker pulls up at her house, right? Because she they stopped by the restaurant and told Tucker what was going on. So now Tucker pulls up. He's got to check in on this brave fellow that just suddenly showed up out of the blue and wanted to fix his girlfriend's roof. Now, this is that is that's a reasonable thing to do. Yeah. He is being eminently reasonable throughout this whole thing. They need to make him out to be a bad guy, or else I like him still. And I like him still. He just shows up and he's like Oh, so you're fixing the roof. Are you a roofer? No, you're not. A, you're not a roofer. Then this is done. I will pay for a real roofer. This is crazy. Oh, I can get I can pay with money. And he's like, oh, no, so can she. I'm hiding a hundred six thousand dollars like an evil leprechaun. Also, can we just say 
when the two men competing for your love are named Bray and Tucker, it doesn't matter who wins, the female orgasm loses. Okay? Like, let's just be very clear. <laughs> Team neither. Yeah, right? I don't know. Jerry O'Connell, beautiful. Beautiful man. So again, they Just cast saying. these guys in reverse. If they reverse the casting in and it makes a lot more fucking sense. But Jerry O'Connell asks Bray, he's like, hey, man, why are you fixing her roof? And he goes, that's, that's why I the half ass writers. <laughs> right. Because he's still he, he, like his literal answer. This is the second time it's come up in like two scenes. And the answer is, I don't know. I'm trying to figure that out myself. So is the movie. It feels yes. like the movie's deciding on the fly which is the good guy and which is the bad guy, and they don't even know. Tucker's next line needs to be, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so then we go back over to Nana's house. She's got a puzzle for the kids, right? She poured out a puzzle, and the kids are like, puzzles are stupid, and you suck, and I hope you die. I hope you just die and not just in your sleep. Okay. Get your phones out of your pockets, you bricks. <laughs> this is this part's fair. Puzzles are the fucking worst. Just play any game. No. Puzzles are great. I like puzzles. What? Yeah. Puzzles are delightful. You don't like kitchen islands and you like puzzles. You're the most problematic thing. You don't have any mental illnesses, Heath. You don't know how nice it is wow. to be free of them for a second <laughs> while you try to fit pieces of cardboard together. Amen, brother. Thank so, you, Noah. I'm going to build you a kitchen island. With, I'll destroy with an, it. With I'll an destroy anti-puzzle. It with, my, with my will. What's the opposite animal of a puzzle? <laughs> <laughs> so I don't, I'm not going to tell you. I feel like you're abusing this knowledge. Um, <laughs> you've, ab you've abused Noah, the lift. <laughs> Noah definitely knows the answer. He's withholding a he really good it, answer. Yeah. He's typing it in the chat GPT right now. <laughs> you're abusing All right. <laughs> the science. Yeah, so okay, so her kids are, are shitty and they suck and Nana tries her best and they keep being an asshole to them. All right, so later that night, we get Bray calling Katie, right? Letting her know how far the plot has gotten. The plot being that limb in her roof. Yeah. And he, okay, I'm going to give him credit for one thing in the movie. He's like, I did a little triage on that hole. Tree. Oh, nice. Never mind. Nice. I'll be done okay, in a couple no, days. That's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. She doesn't even pick up anything about it. No, no, like good, but nothing. Wow. <laughs> so, what am I talking to Eli over here? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> So, and then she just starts unloading all her personal shit on him. Now, I, I love this moment, right? Because they're supposed to be like having a connection, but the writers are terrible. So she's got this guy who's just agreed to like fix her van for her without asking anything in return. Now he's fixing her house for her, not asking anything in return. And she's just like, you know what my personal picadillos at this moment are? The things that are very much bothering me. He's like, let me take that on my shoulders as well. Yeah. Now that I'm, since I'm here. Yeah. And, and then she just very abruptly decides, uh, my boyfriend of like six years, he sucks, I guess. I'm going to start flirting with this random, absurd, magical angel hero guy for no reason. And she's like, so did you like, what are you doing right now? And he's like, I'm on, <laughs> I'm on your roof. I told you at the beginning of the call. <laughs> she's like, sorry, stupid. Do you have a mysterious backstory? But don't say just, you know, vaguely. You'll mention for later? Yeah, right, right. Do you have the first half of a mysterious backstory? <laughs> yeah. Also, would you say you're more of like a Dawson or a Pacey? <laughs> what would you say about that? I'm Team Pacey, by the way. Strong okay. Team Pacey. All right. All right. Just want to put a flag in the ground. But yeah, but we learned that he got divorced about 10 years ago and then he discovered his cult, but we'll learn more about that later. So next morning... We get a very quick scene of Bray flirting with Sloan, the hotel clerk, telling her that he has an important package on the way. He's like, you'll notice it. It'll be the only one that's sealed in wax. Like, it's the <laughs> fucking 1400s. If a guy in a floppy hat and pantaloons comes up to end <laughs> with a package. Make sure you note the heraldry when he shows up. Do I have a message from any squires? <laughs> no, man. What? <laughs> So, okay, so then we check in on the restaurant. Apparently, Katie has donated all this. So the, the restaurant got fucked up in the storm and hasn't reopened yet. They're still, like, fixing shit. So she donated all the food that was in there to a local food bank and didn't tell Vern from Stand By Me that she was doing The guy who owns the yeah. restaurant, she didn't tell him that. So that's good, what she did. <laughs> but Jerry O'Connell has to be like, yeah, cool, like, it's my restaurant. I mean, yeah, but no, right. no, it's fine. But like, 
You're being super weird. Well, and they're also, they're not donating just the food that would spoil, right? Because we see the kid packing up like pepper and the, and she's got a big box of saltine crackers, right? Like the, yep. the restaurant's going to be open the day after tomorrow. The pepper isn't going bad in the next two yeah. days. There's not going to be like 100,000 people in the Superdome just, you know, with like, oh, a gallon of pepper. <laughs> right, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Oh, anyway. some saltines to sprinkle yeah. it over. <laughs> pepper fight. I like that Tucker is like, oh, yeah, no, we can give the food away, but why are you packing it up? She's like, well, I was supposed to be working. And he's like, don't act like the help. Stop. It. Yeah. <laughs> and, also, and Nana's there for no fucking Nana's there just spelling out random characters motivations for us in case we're not keeping up. Right. <laughs> We also get another uh we also get another fixing and tools montage for a second here. Yep, carpentry montage number two. Yeah, we watch carpentry montage number two with Bray. My favorite part was the spackling, because you watch this actor who's clearly never touched a tool ever be like, I'm spackle knifing. It's called a spackle. Do, do I cut it? Dude, it's what? it's even worse than you're giving it credit for. That was a stand-in. Right, because like we we see the the scene before that where he's just got to screw in the screw with the fucking wait. They had a stunt spackler. There was who a also stunt didn't know spackler. Yes, yeah. right, right. It, it was clearly just some grip that's like Jesus fucking Christ. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> it was because you just see his shoulder in his hand. He had no. It was. I love that so fucking much. We should also mention, by the way, because this is going to be sort of an important plot point that Nanny is uh, like trying really hard to get Katie Holmes to sell her house, right? Nana works in real estate or whatever. She's like, I could sell that house. You could tear it down. The land is worth a fortune or whatever, but she doesn't want to tear down her house. That's important. Yeah. Or by the standards of this movie, all, that's it. No, yeah. it, it, it isn't, but yeah. <laughs> no, it will never matter. Movie has to be about something. <laughs> I feel like that got said in that tone of voice in yeah. the writer's room a lot. <laughs> Listen, there's only so many plot points and sentences one can write into a script about plot points. So. so Look, this movie was made in 2020, which means it was written in 2019 or earlier, which means ChatGPT didn't exist yet, so fucking movie's got to be about something. Yeah, right, right. So, okay, so, and then we we get Bray. He's finishing up at the house for the night, and he notices something in the river. It's a piece of, like, corrugated iron or something. It's a roof. There's a mad, there's, like, there's a, there might as well be a house that he just picks up out of the river. <laughs> oh, I like, could use part of this. And, like, over the other house with his hands. Want it so badly for a flash cut to a people who are just missing that piece of their roof? Oh, God has abandoned us. <laughs> <laughs> It's the next house. They're just watching it happen. They're like, that's ours. That's our, that's ours. Manifested. To- I manifested this. <laughs> this yep. Yep. <laughs> dibs, dibs, manifest. Universe dibs. Yeah. <laughs> so- They're just racing to like scribble out new vision boards against each other as a little duel. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and so then we, we cut to, it's like that night and uh, Katie Holmes is crying over the unfinished puzzle, you know, supposed to be, I guess, crying over the possibility of selling her house. And getting $106,000. I get it. You do the edges and everyone says work in by color. But what the fuck does that mean? (laughs) Thank you. Puzzles are stupid. Yes. So we get a quick shot of Bray jogging because you're welcome. This is awesome. Okay. Let's talk about this because Bray was like, hey, why don't I just like jog around from from around the block? And they were like, oh, no, you don't have to do that. He's like, no, it's cool. I'll be like a little sporty. And they're like, hey, are you going to have to stop and catch your breath for like... (laughs) I'm going to say a solid 60 <laughs> seconds of screen time so that like the camera just holds perfectly still while you like fucking clutch your knees and try not to throw up. No. No. <laughs> and then there's also, and this is barely worth mentioning, but I have to point this out because it's so fucking dumb. The kids all wake up the next day and they see that the puzzle's been finished. Mom finished, stayed up last night and finished their puzzle. What a dick move. These kids get two thirds. I know of the you way. kids wanted this puzzle to be done, so I did it. What a you. dick move! Well, now yeah. what are we gonna do with the afternoon? <laughs> they just wake up. Oh, Zelda's at a hundred percent. A hundred percent. Wow. Th- uh, thanks, mom. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so now and then we get this great scene. Nana has cooked breakfast for the kids, right? She's made them some eggs and some ham and some muffins or whatever. And they're all like, we don't want freshly cooked ham and eggs. We want cereal. And Nana's like, I, um, 
I feel like this is an abusive relationship and I don't want to be here anymore. What if you guys fucking sucked grandma's dick? Have you considered giving grandma's dick a big suck? (laughs) (laughs) Go eat some cereal on the way to school then. I don't know what to fucking tell you. You don't like my puzzles. You don't like my house. You don't like my neighborhood? No. Go back to your fucking giant hole in your house. Tree house. Oh, my God. Full of water. And and by, by the way, the movie never acknowledges that everybody's a dick to Nana. Never. At any point. No, nobody ever apologizes. She's never like redeemed in any way or anything. No, yeah. the movie is her fault, according to the movie, actually. Oh, you're right, because mm-hmm. of her negative thing. You're right. Yeah. She negatively yeah. thought her yeah. son did she's, this. Yeah. She's the negative. <laughs> pro- she's like a cell phone jammer for positivity in the movie. <laughs> no, you're right. In the movie. Yeah. Right. She, yeah, because she keeps talking about how she's never going to do any better than Vern from Stand By Me. So she might as well settle on him. You're right. So and just then, as the kids are complaining about their freshly cooked ham and eggs, mom gets a, a text that the roof is fixed and they can come home today. Yeah. So they go back to the house. They check it out. And what he's done is he's used that salvaged piece of scrap to make like a skylight in the kitchen. So it's even better than it was before. It's not. It's and he's so he's running a scam. He manifested roof stuff by coincidence. <laughs> nobody's nobody. Only the kids are even slightly skeptical at this point. Yeah. 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 And they're like, wow, that's a pretty big coincidence. And he says, coincidence is God's way of staying anonymous. You know who said that? A white Buddhist? Albert Einstein. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, hey, as much as Albert Einstein ever fucking yeah. said it. <laughs> <laughs> I started to type that. I got like, coincidence is, and Google was like, I'm going to stop you right there. You're an idiot. <laughs> yes, Einstein did not say that. No. And I love to, when he, when he says that was, it was Einstein that, that said that the fucking girl, Missy, the 16 year old girl is like, the E equals MC2 guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's him. That's him. The guy who invented that random series of letters and number. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but the key here, though, is that Einstein agrees with the premise of the secret. And mom is just like, hey, could you um, not evangelize white guy hippie magic to my children at all, perhaps? No. And he's like, oh, okay. So then mom and the sisters leave. It Just Bray and Greg are left in the kitchen for a minute. And the kid is like, hey, man, didn't you have an envelope with like a 15th century wax seal on it when I first saw you? Are you ever going to resolve that part of the plot? And he's like, not in act two. I'm not. And the kid's like, oh, okay. All right. No worries. Makes sense. So he goes to leave. Katie Holmes chases him down with a check. She's got the $500. He takes the $500. He takes the money. Okay. Okay, let's again. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you for the $500 you owe me. Yes. Goodbye now. He's now committed the crime of fraudulently doing roofing when he's not a roofer and been paid for Unlicensed. it. And he took it from a struggling single mom who has no money with a post dated check. Well, who has money that he just won't give her. Yes, exactly. That she doesn't know about. And then they have this moment, right, like where he's like, you know, there's something about your eyes. And then right then Nana interrupts. And she's like, you've got an emergency call from Tucker. Tucker's on the He was burning. Stand by me. <laughs> yeah. So she goes to take the phone call from Tucker. He's just inviting her to the restaurants reopening that night. Don't feel like that's an emergency. But what's amazing is that that's not the end of the scene. She goes back to fucking Bray. And she's like, "I, you were saying something about getting lost in my eyes. We're at an almost romantic moment now. So you want to, you want to finish the thing that you were saying earlier? He's like, I sure don't. That would end the movie too early. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then Bray's like, I can come back and cut down the, the tree for you over here on the side too. And then grandma is like, what just Tucker can do it. Don't have this weird guy come back. It's weird what you're doing. And that's when Katie Holmes is like, Tucker, Tucker's going to cut down Tucker and his ivory tower fucking, crab shack business that he has <laughs> no <laughs> they'd have to bring in some other like stunt spackler for that guy come on <laughs> give me a break so but yeah no he promises to come back the next day and cut down the tree that still got her van pinned in so then we cut to the restaurant's big reopening tucker has a speech and during his speech about how like they all worked hard to get the restaurant reopened he proposes to katie Holmes. Uh, gross 
Yep. No, don't don't do surprise nope. proposals in public that are nope. uh, horrible. Especially not like like a, a surprise proposal like in a restaurant when it's just the two of you and other people notice. That's bad. But a surprise proposal where you've got the floor, everyone in the room that includes everybody she works with and all of her friends are all there in the same room. That's just a dick move. Yeah. I mean, I do it to Heath on a pretty regular basis, but it's well, right. Yeah, no, as a yeah, as a prank, it's great. To hurt him, yeah. Right. If there was a just kidding at the end of this, this would be amazing. Opens the ring. It's just his middle finger. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get? So, but yeah. So, but the ring is too small, <laughs> which I, is, I guess, a, an omen. It's a failure on Tucker's part. Yeah. Bad universe conjuring of the size. I like the idea of the customer service department for universe wishing, having to deal with people like, all right, I vision boarded. Yes. I don't have a receipt though. <laughs> Ooh, I can get you an engagement ring, but you will not ask her her ring size. Yeah, no, I'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so they're all leaving the restaurant that night. Dana's like, hey, do you want me to watch the kids tonight so y'all can do like outfit stuff or something? And Katie's like, yeah, I guess. I it's guess. So, she, oh, yes. I would love to have sex with Tucker tonight. Yep. Sounds ooh, <laughs> yeah. yammers. I can't wait to. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, one second. I just had. Uh, mm, yeah. Uh, Mm, so, yummy, yum, I yum, love yummers. how disappointed the kids are too. Like the kids are all looking at him like, I guess you're probably the second hottest. Whatever. Oh yeah. This is rough. A bunch of kids being like, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, 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 no, no. Congrats. <laughs> <laughs> the engagement. <laughs> Still not going to marry magic. <laughs> <laughs> this is a perfectly good magic guy right there. Sun leans in. Don't do anal so you can save something for the guy we like the more. <laughs> Just save that. Save the whole. What? What? <laughs> right. Nothing. Well, I'll tell you what. We are mere inches away from a plot breaking out. So we're going to take another quick break. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Did everyone survive the storm unscathed? Is the house already fixed? Did she just get engaged to a lovely, wealthy gentleman that cares very deeply about her and her family and who we've been given no reason to dislike or be suspicious of? Then why the fuck are we still watching this? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the single scene introduction of and resolution of the film's central conflict conclusion of <laughs> The Secret Dare to Dream. And then, as I forded the river in my canoe, I realized this was the last place I wanted to be. Oh, wow. Hey, honey. Oh, uh, Crempleton. Hi, uh, Steve, this is Crempleton, my... Current boyfriend. Pleasure to meet you. Did you say current boyfriend? Steve here is just helping fix up Pawpaw's shack full of war medals. Nothing I love more than honoring the troops. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Um, just quick thing. Why is he not wearing a shirt? Oh, yeah, sorry. I guess it got ripped off when I was saving those puppies from that kite fire. He was <sighs> so heroic. <laughs> I was, yeah. Okay, yeah, sorry, just, can I say something? Sure, Craig, go ahead. It's it's Crampleton. It just feels like I'm not the love interest anymore, and we've been dating for like six years. I've met your family, met your kids, they know me. And this dude right here, he's been here for like, what, four days? Uh, two and a half. Crampleton, you're being ridiculous, stop nope, it. Nope, not being ridiculous. I'm just pointing out exactly what's happening to me. And after a six-year-long relationship, just, just sort of want to shine a spotlight on how not cool this behavior is. Look, Chris, I'm not pretending to know what's right and what's wrong in this mixed-up, crazy world. But whatever happens, let me just shake your hand and say that I know you're a good man. Nope, no, uh, I'm not the problem here. You are the problem here, Steve. You are. It's you. Hey, Steve, you want to come teach me how to ride a bike? Oh, hey, Crampleton. Sure thing, kid. No, seriously? I fucking bought you that bike, Brian. I bought you that. You said you were too afraid to learn. I paid for the therapy after that. Brian, why don't we go ride bikes, man? I'm not the bad guy here. You guys are all the bad guy. You are. And put on a shirt. It's like 55 degrees outside. Ridiculous. <laughs> Asshole. <laughs> 
said, we're back for still more of this shit. And we're going to rejoin the action with that asshole Tucker giving Katie Holmes a Land Rover like a dick. What yeah. the fuck is happening? He's <laughs> delightful. The, the proposal was weird, but he's delightful. And I hate the other guy. Bre Am I supposed to feel the other way? Does the movie think? I don't. People watching this would feel the other way. I want a man who fixes my car with duct tape and fucking insulating foam, not a man who buys me another car because of safety caution. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right. So, like, they're at his house and he's like, hey, look out the window. And she looks out the window and they the, the Land Rover's there with the big bow thing on it, like a Lexus commercial, which is fucking nonsense. But still, right? I mean, I feel like you'd let her pick out what car she wants, but whatever. And he does have a bandage and she's like, oh, that's too much. And he's like, look, I can't have my fiance driving around in a, in a, a poor person car. Right. I mean, what is she? Heath? <laughs> she looks like Heath. <laughs> Things going to catch fire while you're driving it. Listen, if Jerry O'Connell buys me a Land Rover, I'm happy. About it. I don't get <laughs> right, to pick yeah. the color. Okay, fine. <laughs> so, yeah, and, and mom's like, oh, well, I got to go. I got to get ready for, you know, my daughter's 16th birthday party tomorrow. And he's like, right, right, 16th birthday party. And she says, yeah, she's real nervous because, like, the, the other kid is going to have food trucks at her party. And he's like, oh, hey, I, I can I can fix that. I can also get food trucks to come to your party. And she's like, no, you dick. No, ours, you unreasonable ours is the worst one. Fuck you. You don't even know how to use a chainsaw or a spackle <laughs> knife. I, I'm really trying to turn my daughter against you because there's this guy who fixed her roof and I think I'm going to end up with him. So if you could not bring anything at all. Yeah. Nothing. Right. Actually, could I borrow $500 to pay him for the room? <laughs> and now, and, and we should point out, by the way, that the daughter's been saying constantly, like, what I really need is a laptop, right? I need a laptop because I don't have a computer and I'm a fucking 16 year old girl who exists in the world in 2020. And she could have said, yeah, why don't you buy my daughter a laptop? That's what she really needs for, you know, school and socialization and existing in 2020. Tucker might as well hand her a laptop at that point and she slaps it out of his hands and runs away. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh-huh. This is a MacBook Pro, you piece <laughs> of shit. <laughs> <laughs> so meanwhile, okay, so we cut back. Bray is chainsawing out the van when he sees Greg angrily throw away a box. So it's time to go have a heart to heart between Bray and Greg. Right. Hey, bud. You manifesting anger at the trash can? <laughs> so you annoying. dock moping over there? You moping <laughs> angstily on the dock? You taking acting lessons from Katie Holmes on the side? Because that's her thing. You sad because your mom raw dog Tucker last <laughs> night? <laughs> so, I'm sad about that too. You want to do some CBT? <laughs> do a little cognitive behavioral therapy? I'm not a therapist, but uh, I'm also not a roofer, so lots of yeah, life. Right, 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 yeah, whatever. And he's like, I don't want my mom to fuck Vern from Stand By Me. He was the fourth most attractive in a group that had Will Wheaton in it. And, and he's like, no, I get it. I understand. <laughs> oh, that's fair. You know, sometimes when people get reacted by attractiveness, a lot of other factors to be considered there, <laughs> Greg. <laughs> so but he's like, so, but I, so I, but the thing I threw away was my chicken feeding invention because I can't get it to work. And, and he's like, you don't think it's uh, a little late in the movie to introduce a chicken feeding invention? And he's like, nope, not, we're going to introduce virtually no. everything in the film actually from here on out. Not if we resolve it within the next six and a half seconds. And he's like, yes. yeah, I guess if we resolve it immediately. <laughs> it's so stupid. He's like, well, if you move the kebab over here and the kebab over there, boom, now you can feed chickens. Now you can feed chickens because we all know the hardest part of feeding chickens is throwing things on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Can't throw too much on the ground, nor too little. <laughs> Can't go too far. Nor not far enough. So yeah, that's been automated. Hooray. Yeah. Now all of a sudden he like he moves his hand once and it's like a Tesla chicken feeder with yes. auto whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then he goes and has a heart to heart with Missy. And this is all the more uncomfortable, right? Because this is like a 40 year old man, like awful flirty with the 16 year old girl kind of a moment. Stay away from the children, man. Yeah. Stay the fuck away from the children. Yeah. But so she decides, Missy decides to unload all her birthday party issues on Bray, but luckily he has some fucking 
Mary Poppins wisdom for her too, I guess. Well, yeah. Again, it's wishing magic. Yep. So he's like, so what do you want for your birthday? Like you laid out the problem. What do you want as the solution? How do you want your birthday to go? And she's like, oh, I'm not sure. He's like, well, if you don't know what you want, how are you going to do the universe magic? Taffy. That's what she says. Yep. She's like, Taffy, I want Taffy, <laughs> which I don't know why the movie chose this. They chose Taffy. And even Bray, the guy trying to like do the magic is like Taffy. Okay, I mean, like, I'll give you a mulligan on that. I'll give you, like, a few more seconds. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> do you want Did you just to... name the fourth worst candy? Yeah. Do you want to try again? <laughs> no, everybody at my party can sit around making taffy. It's like, oh, labor. They could do labor. Can we uh, Can see. we make Mike and Ike's? No? Okay, then I guess taffy will have to do. <laughs> so, you know what's perfect for a family that's dealing with root canals? Taffy. Yep. Taffy. Yeah. Beautiful. And and he's like, yeah, you can make a this. This is just such a weird line. I have to point it out. He's like, yeah, you can make a bonfire and have s'mores. And Missy says, thank you. How do you know about s'mores? As though what? she thought it was some secret family recipe. It's like Eli's son thinking he invented the macarena <laughs> or something. Yeah. I thought s'mores were just a TikTok thing. You're saying you've seen them in person. <laughs> So, and then mom shows up in her sweet new Land Rover, right? And Missy tells her about the idea for the taffy party. She's like, oh, great. Completely changing the theme of the party the day before. That's that's great. That's, I love that, that's actually. I love that you're doing that. And hey, you know what's easy to get together at the last minute? <laughs> Large scale ingredients for taffy. <laughs> so, oh, you're in a taffy party. Cool. Yeah, I'll just call my taffy guy. Dude, <laughs> what the fuck are you doing, Bray? Right. Taffy party? Right. And then Missy invites the 40-year-old man to her sweet 16. She's like, Bray, you're coming to my taffy party, right? And he's like, that is not at all problematic. No. No, of course I'm coming to the taffy party. Are you kidding? There's like three candies worse than taffy. I will absolutely <laughs> be there. Yeah. And so Missy leaves and, and just leaves Katie Holmes and Bray there. And she's like, you know, I got, I have to talk to you about something. And he's like, what's that? And she says, I don't understand the plot or your motivation or my motivation. Nothing in this film makes sense. And he's like, right? <laughs> what's, what's happening in the movie right now? I don't know, but they keep saying action and not saying stuff. <laughs> and I feel like if we just if we just vibe, we'll be on Amazon Prime and four podcasters in their audience will be the only people to see it. <laughs> are they looking at us right now with the cameras? I think they are. This whole time? <laughs> <laughs> and Bray's like, look, Katie Holmes, there's something I need to tell you. It's important. And Katie Holmes is like, you know what? There are 38 minutes left and only four of them are credits. Noah checked. Uh, so I'm going to cut you off right there and tell you to finish that sentence at my teenage girl's party. And he's like, really? <laughs> really? <laughs> really? You want me to wait to the other half of the sentence for... There's not <laughs> There's not another thing calling you away. Like, let's be clear. She's no. not like, oh, I'm sorry. I've got to do this. She's like, no, no. <laughs> tell me later. Yep. Why? Why? No reason. I really, I wanted her to be like, well, unless you have a check for $106,000 for me, I think that's <laughs> I don't see, I don't see well, what actually, I have a <laughs> <laughs> You're finishing your sentences again, silly goose. <laughs> so, Boop. I'm off to go buy 150 pounds of sugar and some calcium <laughs> carbonate. Along with a fucking industrial kneading machine. <laughs> you give me $500, I'll get you a whole bunch of taffy. I black can, market. I'm an unlicensed taffy puller. I can, I can, you give me $16, I can bring you a Guatemalan woman whose hands have the strength of a thousand taffy machines. <laughs> <laughs> I have a check for $106,000 <laughs> My fingers in your mouth So So she goes inside Nana's there Nana wants to marvel at her engagement ring Wants to nibble at her engagement ring Don't ask Nana's trying so hard Look, this woman 
this woman married her son and she fucking hates her. It's obvious because she's an idiot who ruins everything. And then her son died. And instead of just getting to be like, peace, I'll see you grandkids at Christmas. She hangs around and tries to help her while she fucking throws herself downstairs and gets herself $104,000 in debt. And now she's like, oh, look, you're marrying another penis. Here's me desperately trying to create a better world for my grandchildren. And Katie Holmes is like, eh. Oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Nana goes at this point, she goes, you know, not many men would marry a woman with as much baggage as you. And I'm like, you think she means the Tom Cruise stuff? Do you think? Um, I think she means the Tom Cruise stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but she's like, but Katie Holmes is like, hold on a second. Your negativity is drawing negative things to your life. But if I just call on the power of positive thinking I could fuck Ray you know she has that like that first moment yeah and the old lady's like really sounds like you just inferred that I killed my son with negative thinking would you like to take that back or fight because those are the two <laughs> right. yes. options <laughs> so okay and then we have a quick scene with Katie and Tucker at the dock and they're chatting about the, the taffy party and Tucker again He's just like, hey, you know, it's weird to invite a 40 year old man that you've known for four days to your 16 year old girl's birthday party. Right. And she's like, stop being an asshole who's terrible. You're the villain of this movie, Tucker. <laughs> no, I'm not. This is crazy. I don't know what's happening. Everything I do, except maybe oh, now he's yelling. You see him yelling. Did, ah, <laughs> this is me. This is Heath talking. I don't I'm Jerry O'Connell, but Heath is talking <laughs> through me and he is angry. <laughs> so yelling. So meanwhile, in the French Quarter, Bray is sitting on a uh, balcony reliving plane crash trauma, right? He was in a plane crash. So stupid. They cut to the plane crash and all of us wrote in our notes like, well, that seems like a better movie. Why don't we do a movie about him getting in a plane crash? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Also, sorry, where did the positive thinking kick in? Because it's not clear. He gave us like two sentences of backstory. Did he start positive thinking after the plane crash? Like the plane crashed. He huddled himself in a sleeping bag in the snow and thought to himself, everything's coming up Millhouse. Yeah. Like what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Yes. No, he, st he, he decided on doing universe magic because he was like, fuck, I just barely survived that. I probably could have vision boarded a, a plane in the air the whole time yeah, and I would, I would have avoided have, this. I would have done the trick. Okay, here's a twist that would be great. If he ate the husband to stay alive in this moment. <laughs> oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. And, then, <laughs> and it was like, because that's what we learn is that the husband yes, was also just... on this plane and th died. That's how the husband died. Right. Yeah, that would have been a way. No, more no, that would have been. Plot. That's right. Yeah, no, I, I devoured his heart, and so now I love you. Yeah, or kills him for the last blanket. Yeah. Oh, that's actually that's <laughs> that could be a pretty good movie, actually. So okay, so but then but Sloan interrupts his his flashback. God's not dead; he's surely alive. There you go. <laughs> so nice. Yeah. So but but Sloan interrupts his reverie. She's got a FedEx envelope, and just then Katie texts him with the formal invite to the 16 year old girl's birthday party. And then we, we cut to this like prepping for the party montage. Like so many of my notes from this point on are how is there still so much movie left? <laughs> so, and, and of course this is also where we start like desperately trying to make Tucker into the bad guy. <laughs> we get this moment where like mom sets out this cake that she's obviously baked herself. And it's got a happy birthday, Missy on it. And then he, pulls out this other cake, this sheet cake that has like the photograph printed on it thing with like him and the family all together. Okay. This was rough though. Like they finally decided like, oh, I, have we done anything bad about Tucker yet? Yeah. <laughs> so, right. but, so they got the proposal being stupid, you know, public, don't do that. And then photo cake with him in the photo. Like, like Michael Scott with the ski photos. It, it was rough. <laughs> so, yeah, no, this was Keith bad. mentioned that uh, I, I could point out that we have had a relationship that lasted longer than three and a half days, and that might change your And you're throwing my cake in the garbage. Oh, okay. Uh, well, okay. yeah. Okay, but but they do need a sheet cake here because that tiny, there's like a bunch of kids showing up and there's like there's, three th pieces th of cake. Obviously not yeah, enough Obviously they yes. need the sheet yeah, cake. Yeah, they did. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then also this is where we meet and, and see for the only time Katie Holmes's black friend. This is so rough. She goes like, "Hey, is this uh that Bray guy? Are you are you fucking him or 
can I fuck him? Because he's pretty hot. And she's like, no, you go and fuck him. I no. don't I don't mind. No, I'm not fucking him. Person who works at the restaurant that was there when Tucker, who is standing one and a half inches from us, proposed to me. And I said, yes. And she's like, <laughs> yeah. right. Well, time for me to leave the movie. <laughs> so Search through the rest of the movie and you'll find 40 other Korok seeds, which I will pop <laughs> out of. <laughs> Give you a hint about the next one. <laughs> but yeah, but so, but Missy is, is stressing out and guests are arriving and Taffy gets pulled. This party fucking sucks. And then we have to, like, once again, we have to make Tucker into a bad guy. So we have this exchange where he's like too possessive or something of Katie Holmes. Well, there's also a moment where he's like, I'm excited to have children with you. And she's like, fucking no. And he's like, oh, cool. Is is that what that was supposed to be about? Because she's like, where she's like, you know, before I had kids, I was going to have a life. And he's like, well, maybe you'll do that again with me. I was thinking he meant have a life, but you, but it's, it's have kids. Yeah, you're right. No, that makes more sense. I'll let you talk. If it makes it any difference, you can talk when you're having the babies. (laughs) Oh, Jesus. (laughs) So yeah, and, and and so then Nana calls Katie Holmes in from the party, right? She, they're all out in the yard pulling their taffy and she's like, hey, I need to talk to you real quick. We need to establish and resolve a conflict in this scene. So I, I need to borrow you. She's like, yeah, sure. So she comes in and Nana starts trying to explain that Ray stole the dead dad's invention and sold it and made a bunch of money and he's lying to her and she just learned that on the internet. And all of us have in our notes, it's like, you you had an hour and 16 goddamn minutes movie. Why the fuck are we just hearing about every single element of this plot now? An hour also, and he's got a twin brother in. who's evil and he's insane. <laughs> he's escaped from the hospital next door, but he has a hook for a hand, so we better keep an eye. And he <laughs> has built a weather controlling machine. <laughs> <laughs> so... It's so stupid. And let's be clear. There is only one moment right now when she should not confront Bray about it. And it is in the center, the dead center of her daughter's lame ass taffy party. (laughs) Yes, right. But she does anyway. She's like, no, this cannot wait. Everyone gather around. Yeah, everybody gather around. Let's make my daughter's birthday party about me real quick. And she's like, did you know my husband through some convoluted plot that we haven't bothered to set up in the first hour and 16 minutes? And he's like, yes, I've been meaning to tell you. And then we get Heath's best worst. (laughs) We get this fucking subtle face push of a slap. It's so sad. (laughs) She might as well grab a piece of taffy and try to do it. And it just falls apart each time. Stretches too much, but the but the entire party just gasps like you just said, "fucking Toontown" or something. It was amazing. Everybody's just a way overreacts. Did you steal my husband's thing and then eat his heart to sustain yourself in the Andean mountains and then survive? And he's he doesn't he explain right here again, like or he starts to explain like, no, I have like so much information that you would need before having any reaction like this. He's got this perfectly reasonable explanation that entirely deflates the movie, but they have to have like different people keep interrupting him so he can't get all the way through it. Right. Katie Holmes interrupts him and Nana interrupts him and Tucker interrupts him. And he's like, birthday clown falls down in a diabetic seizure. He's like, okay. (laughs) Spiders start coming out of the house or so. Yeah. It's it's so fucking. My favorite part is Tucker's interruption because Tucker, Tucker's like a golden retriever when you pretend to be excited. He's like, oh, yeah. No. I'm mad at uh, this guy too. Yeah, fuck this guy, right? Okay. Yes. Is it because he's Austrian? He looks real Austrian, huh? <laughs> Tucker tries to be kind of tough here, but it doesn't work out for him. He's like, you, I agree with everybody else, need to leave this taffy party right now. <laughs> you know what? You can, you, okay, no, you can have one piece, but then you must go, sir. <laughs> you, sir, are uninvited from this Taffy party okay. protecting my woman. <laughs> okay, nice. which like, color do you want? I'll grab it for you. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, I'm going to wrap it for you too because I don't want you to just. Oh, well, yeah, because so you're going to get in your truck, obviously. You, you want wax paper and then another bag, like a second one, so you can carry it. <laughs> cool. So we get to, we go back to the hotel. Bray is shamefully packing up, ready to leave town because it's that point in the movie, right? 
And as he's walking out, as he's checking out, he stops by to talk to Sloane again, as though the actor playing Sloane had some minimum number of scenes in her contract. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. He's like, hey, you know, I have some words of wisdom about the power of positive thinking for you. And she's like, oh, yeah, that'd be great. The movie hasn't had enough of that yet. Okay, but just to be clear, he's leaving now. He's leaving town because... He had a sentence interrupted like three times that would have yes. solved the movie. And he was like, you get three. I'm leaving now. And he's just right. not going to let anybody else f figure out this obvious story. And keep in mind, like, he can text her. Right. He's got her phone number. He could just send a fucking text. Here's the whole story. Right. So. <laughs> and here's $106,000 that I still yeah. haven't given to you. Right. No, but instead, he asks the hotel clerk to have a messenger a messenger delivered the envelope. I wanted her to be like, oh, can I have a messenger deliver this? Yeah, let me check the year. Ooh, it's 2023. <laughs> Send an email. <laughs> and it looks according to this, you're going to have to use one of the uh, million other ways of sending messages besides a footman. Does the hotel <laughs> have owls, please? <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so the next morning, Sloan brings Katie the envelope because Sloan had her fucking minimum, right? And she opens the envelope, and damn if there's not a check for $106,000. And then we get, honestly, one of the greatest misunderstandings of how life works that I've ever seen in a fucking movie. She goes to her little legal pad, her little yellow notepad, <laughs> okay, in which she has added up all of her debts. All of her debts. <laughs> and they come to $104,000. So she's got just enough money to pay it off and a couple bucks left over. Okay. Just to be clear, the movie is saying that the universe wants this very struggling single mom and her three kids to have like two grand in the bank. That's, yes. That's the, so the grand solution of the universe was that. Yes. But keep in mind, like debts are a monthly thing. Right. Like, so what, what that means is that every month this woman goes and gets a new yellow notebook and, and, and rewrites <laughs> out all of her new debts with a total amount. Why would she do that? Do they? Because the kid knows about laptops, right? The kid talks about laptops as a thing. They're aware of them. <laughs> I just, it's so fucking dumb. But yeah, apparently she magneted that into reality with her positive thinking. And that means she can gather the kids together and tell them that she doesn't have to fuck Vern from Stand By Me anymore. And I love that little girl's like, so do I get a pony? And she's like, shut the fuck up. Um, so guys, <laughs> get her a fucking pony. Whatever. Why don't <laughs> I really, I need you to know as my children that I hate Tucker's penis. I just, I hate it so much. Thoughts? <laughs> Thoughts? Huh? Yeah. And it, so and we should point out, too, that she says, like, we have a check for one hundred and six thousand dollars, but this is just the first of a, ro a series of royalty checks that we'll be getting, like, for the rest of fucking time. Get the pony for Bessie. What yes. the fuck? <laughs> right. Now, every time the new invention appears on TV, they get 75 <laughs> cents. <laughs> but mom's like, but we have just enough money after paying off all of our debts to go to town and buy you a computer. Let's go get you a MacBook because we might as well burn some of that money too. just set it on fucking fire. Sorry, I'm going to get angry emails now. <laughs> so, so we cut to town and this is normally a scene that I would just leave out of the show because it doesn't really fucking matter, but it's so good. I have to put it in there, right? This is where, where they have the, the fucking wait. There's a half hour wait at the restaurant. <laughs> oh god yes yeah so they're all about to leave but greg the son is like you know i think i could use positive thinking magic to shorten that down to three minutes and they're like what and just then some people leave and they, the host comes out and says you know the your family party of however damn many of you there are yeah and they get in ambulance people just wheeling some guy out who had a heart attack <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> Well, it's a little bit of monkey's paw. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. so, Greg, you got to be way more specific with your restaurant requests <laughs> from now on, okay, man? It's the start of a Goosebumps episode. <laughs> and then on the drive home from this restaurant and, and MacBook buying trip, Greg yells, stop the car, mom, stop the car. I just saw from 300 yards away our mailbox half submerged in a pond. Okay. 
He recognized <laughs> their mailbox. Their, yes, right. Their <laughs> mailbox. And he recognized it's not that like, mailbox. Right. They could have made it like one of those novelty pig mailboxes or something. So sure. it would be obvious that that was their mailbox. But no, it's just a generic gray mailbox. I wanted a bunch of scenes where he was like, stop, stop, stop. That's our mailbox. <laughs> <laughs> and they had to oh. be like, Greg, you do this every time we drive. No, you know what? That was a that was a beer can. Never mind. Never mind. I just saw a glint. Also, <laughs> Greg doesn't know the envelope was in the mailbox. Greg has no reason to be invested in the mailbox other than the writer coming to him having a panic attack in between <laughs> shoots and be like, man, this movie makes no fucking sense. And Katie Holmes is super mean in person. I thought that maybe she'd be nice, but she's not. She's real mean now. So... Well, and also there's no new information in the mailbox, right? Because they open the mailbox and it's like, yep, he sure did already have that check for $106,000 and then lost it. and get. But he already told you that. We Greg already told you that. that. And Greg, the kid, told her that earlier. He Like two scenes ago, he was like, hey, mom, that guy showed up like at the beginning of the movie. Right. And had that exact envelope that you now have, just to be clear. This adds nothing. No. Adds absolutely nothing. So, and then we cut, we go over to Bray's house and it would just for like two seconds so that we can see the girl there again and go like, oh, he has a girlfriend though. So that's not the love triangle. Again, that's going to turn out to be a sister. And then we have maybe the weirdest scene in the entire fucking movie where Bessie, the youngest daughter has broken her ceramic pony to the point that it can't be fixed. Yep. Right. <laughs> yeah. And so Missy, the other sister, comes in with mom and they try to calm Bessie down. I wanted Missy to calm down Bessie about the broken ceramic horse. And then like both of them smile and become like universe positive. And then just like giant pony made a taffy smashes through the ceiling. Oh, I was going to think the pieces like suck back together. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. Like Terminator 2 style or something. Yeah. But yeah, no fucking point to this scene, right? Because the mom's just like, oh, well, let's let, you know, let's clean this up. There's no way to, we'll just have to get you a new pony. And they're like, oh, okay. I guess there was a point to that scene. And the mom's like, nope, sure the fuck wasn't. Well, the kids do have the Bray intervention here where they're like, mom, we've been thinking about it. You should fuck Bray. Yes. He seems like he'd be good at cunnilingus. You know, really stay <laughs> down there. <laughs> We're your children. I feel like it's Jerry O'Connell who's going to be better there. That's just me. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. He gives me a good, uh, Good mouth vibe. <laughs> but yeah, but this is where Katie Holmes realizes that Bray was the love interest all along. And then we, we cut to Bray teaching his engineering class. Right. <laughs> and the movie has to say math words for a second. Yes. It's, uh -huh. the, best. it's the best. He's like, now we will derive an equation of motion. Of derivatives. <laughs> Other math words. Class dismissed. <laughs> ingredients. He actually says ingredients. <laughs> he does. He's like, what other words have four syllables? Taffy. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and then we get Katie Holmes visiting dead dad's grave. Right? Yeah. This is a weird speech. She's like, hey, dead husband. Ah, uh, you might want to sit down for this. No, that's what you're <laughs> oh, you're good. it's a you're little good. convoluted. A little convoluted. I'm engaged to Jerry O'Connell, and he's helping their kids for this whole time. But there's this taffy guy. <laughs> Do you remember that guy you met on the plane? <laughs> I'm gonna fuck him a whole bunch. The guy who ate your heart. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Have a flower. So <laughs> yeah. And then she goes to the office to break up with Tucker. And it's just so like, you know, well, we I guess we got to wrap this up, right? Like they, they go in, she goes in, she's got the engagement ring and the key to the to the Land Rover. And she's like, I don't think it's going to work out. And he's like, oh, well, is there um is there time for me to have a whole big scene where we discuss this? And she's like, not really. No, the music's already playing. In, in fairness, he's like, it's the public proposal and the the, fo the photo cake with the sheet cake with the photo. Like, I get it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, those are, I was, uh, I was delightful, bad, except for those two. I tricked Heath for a while, but like, yeah, no. <laughs> Even just one of those would be a valid reason to break it off. She says, I just want you to know I think you're wonderful. And I wanted her to add, I just like this guy I knew for a day and a half more than, like way more than you. Obviously, I was considerably more. So much more. You. And then and then we get this stupid ass fucking scene where Katie Holmes goes home to explain the plot to Nana in case anybody isn't quite following along with all these various complexities. 
the movie is explaining itself to itself one character yes. at a time very slowly <laughs> yes. after having already done that so many times. You see, the banana thing was always a joke. It was my joke and they stole it. They stole my joke. <laughs> so You suck dicks. <laughs> And then it's like, well, I get it, but like Bray still should have just told you he had the check for $106,000. And Katie Holmes is like, and then we wouldn't have had a fucking movie. Now, would we, Nana? Think about it. Think. And she's like, right. Do you want this SAG AFTRA? Do you want the SAG AFTRA money? Because <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing. They stopped showing Dawson's Creek on TV 26 years ago. Okay. So- <laughs> Absolutely incorrect. You can still watch it. I watch it a lot. <laughs> So she says, she's like, but I'm going to go back to school and be a nurse. But first, I'm going to go on a road trip this weekend and see if I can find the end of this fucking movie. <laughs> Let me, can I just throw something out there? Let me throw something out there. A controversial take. A take as hurtful as it is true, if I will. I don't think anybody, when they are free of financial obligation, wants to be a nurse. <laughs> I know a nurse is a laudable thing, but like, if you ask a nurse, like, hey, do you love this? Is this super fun? There's no nurses that are like, yes, if I had a million dollars, I'd still come in every single day. Oh, cleaning the poop off of old people? Are you kidding me? That is like, that's what I would do with my free time. I guess time. what I love most about my job is knowing more than doctors and making a quarter of their salary. <laughs> <laughs> so... All right, so then we we cut back to Bray's class. I love this scene so much because there's a sign at the front of the room that says Vanderbilt in case any of the students <laughs> forgot which college the they university. were attending. <laughs> Where is that? Oh, it's okay. Maybe Never you've mind, heard of professor. it. It's in Never Tennessee. mind. Never mind. <laughs> is this Nashville Community College? No. Okay, oh, no. yes. All right, now that I say it, because obviously it has the sign. <laughs> Are we doing mathematic? Okay. No, he's a sign. He's a math class. Got it. What's the opposite of a puzzle? Yeah. It's okay. I'll figure it out. <laughs> so, sheep. It says sheep. I checked it on chat. GPT. <laughs> so she drives we'll that the, at the front from now on. <laughs> so then we get her like showing up at his. Apparently he's got a fucking mansion, right? Apparently Bray lives in a rich inventor slash professor mansion, right? And we get Katie Holmes showing up there. To like, you know, have the reunion moment. Yes. Okay. Like, uh, that's dumb. But even worse, you call ahead. Right. Before you like, he's he's going to want to take a shower at least, you know, something. He's going to just a little mouthwash something. But he's not there. It's instead it's his sister who we thought was his girlfriend up until now. But she tells us now that she's his sister and has been the whole time and lives in his home, apparently. Anyway, so then we cut back to her house where fucking Bray is showing up because he's doing the show up at her house at the same time that she's doing the show up at his house. Okay. This is the dumbest part, perhaps, of the entire movie because they're saying that the universe chose to make them do like one last annoying extra driving thing right. before the universe yeah. lets them collide romantically finally at the end. Well, you know, they both wanted to finish their audio book and they kind of thought about it for a little too long and that's what you get. Yeah, I okay. guess. Yeah, right. And it's also just like the movie could have just fucking ended, right? It could have just ended because one or the other of them, they could have, and in fact, if they could have stopped at the same fucking gas station as they were going and they could have just looked over the fucking gas island and there they were and it would have made perfect sense given the whole idea that they were manifesting shit throughout the fucking movie and we would have been saved by a goddamn scene. It would have been a better fucking film. But the writer for this movie is so goddamn stupid that he has both of them arrive at their destination, turn back around and drive to a fucking neutral location in between. Yeah. Okay, if while they were driving back, one of them got like, hit by an airplane that came out of the, yes! sky and hit the highway. That's great. I wrote, I want them to have a head on collision so badly. And just like, so good. Sorry, this asshole has his brights on. That's me here. So, and then he's like, you know, hey, so now that we're both like, you know, rich inventors, do you want to stop at the Waffle House? You want to meet at a Waffle House? Wouldn't that be great? Just stop at a fucking. You want to go inside and get an. <laughs> Get in a fist fight with a pregnant waitress. Right. Yeah. No, we'll just make like we just beat the Chargers in the wild card round. Stop at the Waffle House. Why wouldn't just one of them stay put and go meet there? Yeah. Just one of them drives now. Yeah. Right, that would make fucking sense. But no. So, but then we do the whole like they're going to do the running into each other's arms scene, but they're going to do it at a Waffle House parking lot. 
They should fight. <laughs> you you would imagine they'd run together and fight. It's a Waffle House. <laughs> it's kissing is the most wholesome thing two people have ever done in a Waffle House parking lot. <laughs> I wanted them to turn and everyone from inside is outside being like, we thought you was going to fight because it's a Waffle House. <laughs> fuck are you Sorry. doing? You here for waffles? <laughs> it's like they were trying to tee us up, right? It's like they were like, you know what? Those poor gam guys, we really fucked up this ending. Let's give them, let's tee them up for something here with this Waffle House reference. It's like a really bad country song. Just like, come and love at the Waffle House. <laughs> covered and smothered and smashed up love in the front. <laughs> so, actually, that sounds like an amazing country song. Yeah, that sounds like an incredible song. All right, so so then so we wrap up on the house. Apparently, she's had it all renovated and she sold it so they could move into Bray's rich ass inventor professor mansion. The one plot point they thought they had, they were like, ah, no, fuck this house. I got money now. Yeah, yeah. Take it. <laughs> right, right. But then, but we stick around long enough. It's Christmas, and Bray got Bessie a pony, a pony. Oh. What? I just, I really wanted a truckload of taffy to be also part of this moment. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, imagine that. And I'm like, get it? Because shit just falls into attractive white people's laps so often that they have to pretend they have magic powers not to feel guilty about no, it. No, none of this was magic. A guy no. bought a pony. The big, right. big <laughs> exchange of goods is a and guy services. bought a pony <laughs> with money. From yes. the job he had. Yes, exactly. That little girl's not going to take good care of that pony. No, probably not. And then, and that's it. We we zoom out. There's this, we, we zoom out from Earth all the way out of the fucking Milky Way goddamn galaxy for some reason. No idea. Yeah, I I, I wrote in my notes. Oh, man. Are we going to zoom out onto a cat's necklace? It feels yeah. like we're going <laughs> to zoom out we've been, yeah. we've been there. All right. So, uh, but it, the, the, Moral of the story, obviously, is that you can have anything just by wanting it. So now that you guys know that that is the case, what are you going to positive think into existence first? Cancel Heath Swish. Oh, nice. No, no. I, I, <laughs> I have the, what's the opposite of a vision board? Blindness board. I blind Eli with a blindness board. <laughs> what's the, what animal is the most visual? I need to know it so I can Peacock. use a, write a board it's on it. It's an eagle. It's actually an eagle. Um, so, Ooh. and, and <laughs> I wouldn't have guessed. I got that it was a bird. And while that's going to do it for our review of The Secret Dare to Dream, that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to manifest another episode next week. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, Noah, we're going to keep the love going and bring the heat with next week's movie, God and Salsa. All right. Well, even Sans' description, that name has me excited. So with that to hey, look forward to, for we're going to bring... God and yeah, right? Salsa. Yeah, no, we don't yeah. need more than that. That's going to bring episode 391 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors to help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation to patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Alias, Citation Data, D&D Minus, and The Skeptic Ride, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slavik of Jeff on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a check of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm going to promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club clothes. Tucker put Bray dying in a second plane crash on his vision board and married Melinda. <laughs> Melinda and her children lived happily ever after on their $2,000 surplus. <laughs> <laughs> Eli Bosnick was a chance encounter with me away from a life where he stood outside of busy restaurants and tried to use wish magic. <laughs> Still do that. Her name's Joey Potter forever. Thank you. You mean buying? Are you buying a car with money? Oh, I lost teeth. Are you? Are you buying a car with money? <laughs> Did we lose you, Eli? Is that what's happening? Hello? Oh, my internet went out. The money that you have in your bank. <laughs> Eli, did you just bud Dwyer on us? Is what you're using us? to purchase a motor vehicle? <laughs> oh, no. Because I can't have, you know, like a dismissive ending to this interaction that we're having until you say, <laughs> stop recording. Slowly. There he is. Wait, yes. there he is. I hear him. I hear Refresh. him. Refresh.
Do we have to restart? He's offline now. He's online now. I heard him for a second saying refreshed. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. yeah. How about now? All right, we can hear you now. Yeah, sorry for that. I, what I imagine is truly excruciating <laughs> pause. <laughs> oh, I continued the conversation as long as I could. <laughs> sorry, you want to give me that line again? But that's the movie, though. That is the movie. <laughs> Dude, I laughed so hard just being Crempleton. I was like, my name, my name is Crempleton. And this is her, 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 so her stupid. Pick. Missy and Bessie and Bray and Tucker. Fuck. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Eli tried to get the answer to the what's the opposite of a puzzle. No, this is actually, this was this is really good. It's just that, that my whole bit like counts on I that. I know, I stole it. I got it from ChatGPT. <laughs> I went on ChatGPT. <laughs> I asked ChatGPT what, the op what animal was the opposite of a puzzle, and it made fun of me, but then it told me it was sheep. Oh, well, right on, right on. Awesome. That is correct. It's probably just a coincidence. ChatGPT yeah. is actually just Noah somehow answering. <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights.